What's up guys? We are back with another NECA Toys Review taking a look at the first wave of Defenders of the Earth figures. So we're taking a look at three figures today. We've got Ming the Merciless, we've got Flash Gordon, and then we've got the Phantom. I am really interested in these just because there's something a little bit different for NECA. This is superhero stuff. It's obviously not Marvel or DC, but it's superhero stuff. So I'm really curious to see what they've got going on here. Uh, the packaging is really cool. So this is very much inspired by the the old Galoob toy line from the 80s for that particular cartoon. Uh, so you've got kind of like a space motif with the figure there in the window. You've got artwork down there in the bottom corner with some call outs for their accessories. And then the back of the box has that uh, old logo with cross sell all again done up in that Galoob style. And they've even got the NECA logo done up in the Galoob font like NECA does with like their Kenner homages, which I really like. It's a very nostalgic throwback thing. So let's do it. Let's pull them out and take a look. And here we go, out of the package are Wave 1 Defenders of the Earth figures. And these guys have been, for lack of a better, more whiny term, these have been challenging for me. Normally, I don't have too many problems when it comes to NECA stuff. Uh, I have a normal toy buying experience. I get them, I play with them, I review them, they're fine. Uh, this has not been that situation. Every figure has had stuck joints to the extent that I had to take apart all three figures to get them moving. There might have been other ways for me to do it, but they didn't work. Uh, heat proved to be ineffective in many cases with these figures. Uh, stuff still doesn't want to move exactly the way I want it to. There's a few things that uh, I don't like when it comes to the joints on these figures. Painted joints, chipping joints, uh, that thing is very pervasive with these guys. And it's, it's very much a, there's a lot of stuff I really like about these, and there's a lot of stuff I really don't like about these figures. Figures, uh, right off the bat. So yeah, we're going to take a look at articulation first and I'll talk about the stuff that I had to do as far as taking figures apart as well when we, when we go through how these guys work. They're essentially all the same figure. There's really not anything different about them in terms of articulation. So I'm really only going to talk about one of them. Uh, we'll use the Phantom as our guinea pig because they all move basically identically. Uh, so we'll talk about the Phantom, see what these guys have going on, and then I'll talk about the, the little intricacies of each figure in terms of what I had to do and what was different different about them when it comes to my experience. So if you have any experience with the NECA DC figures, that means the SDCC and NYCC exclusives from 2019, so Batman, Batman again, uh, Superman and Green Lantern, you know what to expect because that's this body. Uh, this is straight up reuse from that set of figures, which I'm perfectly fine with. I really liked those. I still like those. And I didn't really have any issues with those figures. I believe I had to heat them up, uh, which didn't really, you know, pose much of an issue at the time. But it has been a very different experience with this set of figures. And of course, the Phantom was the one I opened the first, so he was the one that I knew uh, had issues right away. So we've got a head that can look all the way up, super far up. No issues with the head. It's a double ball peg. Goes down. Really good tilt. I mean, there's crazy wide range on this thing all the way around. Arms go out at the shoulders. They rotate. Your joints are painted, so be aware of that. Uh, he hasn't really shown me too many issues yet, but they are painted. Uh, you've got swivel all the way around, and then they go out. You've got your bicep swivel. We've got double jointed elbows, and these were and are still very, very tight for me. Uh, I didn't really feel the need to heat these up right away, but they, uh, they definitely are tight, so beware on those. And then we've got our hinges, and rotation at the wrist. We've got uh, painted joints here, so the, the hinge is painted on this wrist. The hinge itself is purple though, so if it starts to chip like this one has, you're gonna see a big purple line on your hands. I, I absolutely hate that. Uh, it drives me nuts from an aesthetic standpoint. I don't really understand why it's that way in practice either. We've got our ab crunch, doesn't really go back a little bit, but he goes forward a good bit, so you can get him to hunch over nicely. And then you've got your waist twist. Legs are where I had the big problem. And this is what I had to take apart when it comes to all three of these figures. So like I said, uh, I did have to take apart all of them. And that was to fix the same issue across the board. There's always options when it comes to doing this kind of stuff, you know, throwing them in, in, a, in a hot bath, putting them in a, in a you know, hair, hair dryer situation, stuff like that, a heat gun. And I tried them both. 
The issue that I had was that at first, this leg, his, uh, his left leg, your right, could not go outwards. This is the same kind of joint system that we had with Bebop and Rocksteady from Turtles. They were notoriously problematic. I didn't really have any issues with them, but they were notoriously problematic. They've got serious ratchets in there, and you can see, I mean, it's still kind of poses a problem, it kind of fights me. Uh, so I got that problem fixed. Then I couldn't use the thigh uh, swivel on it. That does work now, so you've got your thigh swivel and it kicks out. The big problem was that he could not move his legs outward. Well, he could move the right one, your left, but it couldn't move the left one. So the way these work is that the joint that pegs into this leg actually sits inside the crotch. It creates like a, a tunnel. It pegs into the crotch and then it creates a hole for this leg to peg into. So this leg gets this leg pegged into it. What was happening was that the joint just wasn't turning. It was sitting there and it is painted as well. There is paint on that joint because it's like a white joint as far as plastic goes. It was painted. So what I ended up having to do was uh, heating the legs up, popping them out entirely, and I filed down the joint that sits under his junk there and took the paint off, basically. So I took a super, super small amount off of the inner ring, basically, and then popped them back into place. And then it worked, and it worked on all three of them. Um, so I'm not really sure what that tells anybody. You know, your mileage may vary. I'm not telling you to take apart your figure by any means, and if you do and it breaks, I don't know what to tell you, but it worked for me, and it was a very simple fix. Really, to me, it just comes down to why is this joint that is completely hidden painted? Why does it have any kind of coating on it whatsoever? Uh, it definitely created a problem for me, and it took up way too much time when it comes to enjoying this figure. So, as far as actual movement and what he's supposed to do, kick forward, kick backwards, you've got your thigh cut, and then they go out. So pretty normal stuff there. We've got our double jointed knees. And again, they're super, super tight for me still. You've got about that far. And then we've got a boot cut, shin swivel, and then you've got rocker and you've got hinges down at those ankles. And the hinges are painted as well. What color are these? They are purple. So the hinges are purple and they are painted black. Uh, all of them are like that. All of these figures are like that. They're different colors based on the figure, but they all are like that. The, uh, the elbow, the shoulder joints are painted. The uh, elbow joints are painted, the wrist joints are painted, the crotch joints are painted, the knees are painted, and the uh, ankles are painted. Also, they have toe articulation. Those are painted as well, and that is one of the other areas that I have issues with when it comes to uh, one of the other figures. So, taken at face value, it was a big problem situation for me. It just took up way too much time to actually do all of this and to get him back to normal. Does he move well enough when he works? Yes, he moves fine. Like I said, he moves like those DC figures, and I like those figures. Uh, I've, I've, I have liked them for quite a while, so this is more of the same. It moves well enough, but again, it was a big fight to get him to quote-unquote normal. Now to talk about Flash briefly, uh, this is basically just pointing out some of the little things, articulation and joint-wise, uh, that are similar but maybe different as well to the Phantom. So he is he is essentially the exact same kind of figure. You have a little bit of difference though. He's got um, he's got actual you know design and sculpt on his shoulders, so they are a little bit different. But they move basically the same. There's really no issue there. Uh, his head does have a slight bit less range because he has hair and he has that collar, so you've got that to worry about, but honestly, it's not much of anything. Good, good tilt, full range, all that stuff. The the abs, the hips, all of that are the same, and I had the exact same problem here. Again, I had to take them apart, uh, file down the paint on that, and then he's got red hinges in his boots, which are just jacked up beyond repair on mine, and his toes are painted as well. So the the problem that I have with him is unique to, uh, to this particular figure. So the toes don't really work on this guy. The peg that runs through the feet is red plastic that is painted black. And if anything, it's like seized it shut. I have heated and heated and heated this thing over and over and over again. The next step is for me, if I care enough, to try and pop the pin out and then put it back in place after maybe filing it down or something. But it doesn't move. If anything, the front of the foot, the toes, that's where the toes are. They get super, super rubbery, and I feel like they're just going to shear right off. So I've start, I've basically just kind of given up on that one. Toe articulation is nothing I care about on these figures, so it's not a big deal. But at the same time, 
I have seen one instance of that being completely broken. So I'm curious to see what the actual problem is. This joint situation though is just beyond ugly and I don't like that. The wrists are also, they're red pegs with, or red hinges with uh, flesh colored paint over top of them. So you're gonna see stuff like that as well. Otherwise he moves when he's quote unquote at normal, he moves exactly like the Phantom. And he moves pretty well and you can get him into some decent enough poses. And then as far as Ming goes, he is, honestly, he's probably the best of the bunch. I had the least problems with him. Uh, I still did have to take the legs apart though, so all that same stuff applies, but his toes are fine. The only thing that I have, as far as articulation with him that I see as an issue is that his joints are just chipping left and right. Uh, specifically, the shoulders on this guy. I mean, like, there's all sorts of joint rub here. So all the paint that's in that shoulder disc is just chipping right off. It's not even painted on the top. His pegs are not painted, and so there, that's a difference between the other figures as well. Uh, his head, of course, does have a little bit less range than the other two. That's just because of the, the big headdress, though. It's not a big deal. But he, he can also look down still a decent bit despite having the beard. So he moves just as as well as the others uh, basically the exact same kind of figure still cape doesn't really hinder him either and then of course even the belt doesn't really hinder him it doesn't get in the way of that waist twist or anything like that they all move really really well don't get me wrong it's getting them to this point that was the problem and then at the end of the day you still have all of these janky chipped joints so his wrists are painted his uh, ankles are painted as well they're a navy blue though like the legs so they're not as easy to detect but uh, but once you see them you're you're not going to be able to not see them Having said all that, and I'm not certainly in any way going to excuse any of the issues that I had with these figures because my issues are my issues and they, they may not run throughout this line, but I've definitely had problems with these guys today. They do, thankfully, look really good. Like when it comes down to it, outside of the joint problems that I've had with like the, the chipping joints and things like that, the painted joints, which I still don't care for, the figures look great. So we've got our good guys here. So we've got our Phantom and our Flash, and they are very, very similar figures in almost every respect. I mean, the big difference is, of course, the colors, the head sculpt, and then Flash has the uh, the armor plating around his traps and then on the shoulders, and then he's got the collar. The Phantom is a very basic figure, but that's the man's design, so I'm all right with that. They do have unique belts, and in a general sense, I think they look fantastic. If there's one thing that NECA knows how to do, it's really accentuate a nice muscly sculpt and that is done really really well here. These guys are absolutely jacked. The striations in the musculature looks really good. There is a ton of shading all over their bodies and as usual everything is painted. That is of course what leads to a lot of the problems when it comes to the chipping joints but everything is painted. So the suit has nice subtle tones of like periwinkle and blues and lavenders when it comes to the Phantom. And then when it comes to Flash, he's got these subtle kind of light reds, dark reds that contrast with all of the gold all over top of his armor. And then they're seated with these amazing head sculpts. They're very unique. Uh, Flash's head sculpt, I think is incredibly well done. It's striking. He very much kind of gives off that stoic good guy vibe. And then the Phantom, of course, has that very mysterious look to him. He's got the five o'clock shadow, which is painted on there really well. The mask is clean and crisp. And again, if I didn't have so many issues with getting these guys to move correctly, I, I don't know that I would have really anything negative to say about them because they're on bodies that I've already been a fan of for what a couple years now. I don't think they're I don't think they're old or tired. They're certainly not overused, and I just really like them. There is one really weird thing that I've noticed on all three of these figures, though, uh, that I'm definitely going to point out because I just have to. I'm curious to see uh, how far it is, how far reaching it is. So on Phantom here, there is what looks like this little crack on his his left thigh, uh, your right right now, right here. And I don't know what it is. I can see faint lines like this on the Green Lantern and the Batman figure, but they're painted over. This is not, and it exists on both Flash and Ming. Uh, Flash is very, very faint. You probably won't be able to see it. It's painted over here. Uh, so it's just a subtle line. It almost looks like a wrinkle in his pants. But on Phantom, on my Phantom, it is like a straight up crack in the plastic. I don't really know what's going on there. I thought it had been damaged, but then I noticed that they all share it. So 
I guess I do have one thing to complain about, and it's more of a mystery than anything else. Most of the time, I don't even notice that it's there, but in going over these figures so rigidly today, uh, I did kind of sit on that for a few minutes. So we do have that kind of curiosity. I'm curious if anybody else has that problem. But otherwise, I do think they look fantastic. The only thing that holds these figures back aesthetically for me is their joints. When you have stuff like this, like this red splotch on his wrist, or this down here on his ankles, I mean, it just immediately draws your eyes and you, you can't help but wonder why in the world does he have that little splotch there? Or what's going on with Phantom's wrist here? Why is it purple? Why isn't it, you know, flesh tone or whatever you want to call it? Uh, so it's a definite negative. I was kind of expecting it, but at the same time, it's a lot worse out of the box than I was expecting it to be. Ming, of course, gets a little time to shine on his own because, well, he's the bad guy in this wave, and he is by far the most unique when it comes to these figures, at least for now. And, I mean, honestly, at face value, without really worrying about the joints for this guy in terms of, you know, the, the chipping and the, the painted situation there, I think he looks absolutely fantastic. The uh, overall ridiculous, gaudy, over-the-top design for all of the pendants on his chest, the headdress, the humongous, ridiculous belt. I mean, it's all really well done. Sculpt is fantastic. Paint is just through the roof. There is tons of little detail all over this guy. Colors are vibrant and they pop. The head sculpt is really well done. I, I think, and I'm not really sure, you know, I'd have to... I have to have confirmation from NECA, I suppose, but I think there's photo printing on this guy, potentially on Flash as well. Uh, his eyes look to have photo printing on him, but I'm not really sure. The rest of it does seem to be pretty traditional paintwork, and it's very clean and crisp. But, I mean, this design lends itself to an action figure really, really well. He's got the gnarly spellcasting hand on him out of the box with his ring. He's got the, the gauntlets with all that gold and the blue coloring. And it's just a nice, striking, unique design that translates really well into figure form, not to mention the fact that he does have this crazy, crazy cape. So you've got the purple with the red inlay. It is wired all the way through, uh, you know, so you can get this thing to sort of, you know, pose up in the air and have him you know, go crazy with it. It's it's wild. It's probably one of the better uh, soft goods pieces I've seen fresh out of a box in a while. It very It's very much reminiscent of what we see, or at least what I think of right now when it comes to Super 7 stuff. Uh, their capes have been incredibly well done, and this seems to be on par, if not maybe a little better in some ways, because it's incredibly big. There's a lot of fabric here. Uh, so it's definitely one of the better retail level capes. I'm very happy with it. And it looks incredibly uh, well done in terms of overall color presentation. And then it's luster because it's all like a metallic fabric too. So you can see it just sort of like uh, shines under my lights. So he is, he's the star of the wave for me. And I'm not too sure that anybody's going to dispute that. He's unique. He's striking. He's different while still being very similar in overall build. The only thing, literally the only thing that holds this guy back aesthetically is the fact that I've just, I'm, I'm not happy with the joints. And I've said that enough at this point, but I'm not happy with them. Uh, they're not painted on the top. He's got all this chipping underneath his armpits here. And then you've got the chipping, or in many cases, just plain, mostly unpainted joints down at the ankles. So he is not without his faults by any means, but he is still a really cool looking figure. Now, as far as accessories goes, we're going to go through each figure individually. They thankfully come with, honestly, a tremendous array of options and just a lot of cool stuff here. And there's a lot of effect parts with this set, which is always the way to my action figure based heart. So let's start with Phantom, see what he's got. So you've got fists on this guy in the box. We have got a uh, missing ring hand here for his right. This is, I mean, it's got to be, right? The uh, the hand that came with the Green Lantern figure from the New York Comic Con pack. And he's got an effect part for this. So you pop this in here and then you've got him uh, shooting. And of course, it's got a uh, blast point on the end of it. It's like done up in sort of a clear, clearish blue. It's most clear with a tinge of blue to it. So you've got that. We've got a trigger finger hand. And then we've got a blaster pistol which is done up in a really cool like uh, metallic bluey purplish sort of plastic this thing looks really nice catches the light well uh, very very retro futuristic looking so i do like that and we've got a couple of effect parts for this too so you've got a actual blast effect it pops on the end here so you've got the blast coming out and it's got the impact point just like the ring 
But you've also got this little guy here for just like the actual blast itself as it's coming out. So I do like that. So you've got a couple options when it comes to uh, how you want to use this gun. I'm really happy with this. I love the idea of getting the long and short kind of beams for the gun. And then we've got his little buddy. We've got Zuffy here. And this thing is its kind of funny because this thing is articulated. It has zero issues moving right out of the box. So it's got a... It's got moving arms, so they, they hinge outward and they rotate. Uh, you've also got a moving head. The tail is on a ball peg, I think. It moves. And the legs are on the new style of hips, not the old style. So it's the, the ball pegs that stick out from the crotch. So they go outward and they swivel around and move. Uh, I don't know how much articulating you need to do with this little guy, but he does look really good. As we've seen with a lot of the recent turtle stuff, NECA's doing a really good job when it comes to like the buddy aspect of things. Uh, so this guy is, uh, is no exception. It's very cool, nice little pack-in for the Phantom. Flash is pretty similar to the Phantom when it comes to his accessories, but he doesn't have a buddy, so he gets uh, a little bit extra when it comes to the hand department. So you got fists on him in the box, we've got a set of gripping hands, and then you've got a singular left uh, trigger finger hand. And then we've got his gun, which is the same as what the Phantom comes with. He also has the same effect part, so you've got the long range one with the impact point, and you've got the small one, which is just the, the blast itself. So I do, again, really like that. And I'm glad they both include this stuff so you don't have to pick and choose. But he has his uh, signature weapon, so you've got his sword. And I absolutely dig this sword. I think it is fantastic. It is incredibly well done. The sculpt is really nice. The paintwork on it is, is, is just fantastic. And it's got a translucent yellow blade, which, I mean, come on, who doesn't like that? It, it's a really cool looking piece. It's a very nice signature accessory uh, for Flash here. And then last but certainly not least, the coolest looking figure has some of the coolest looking accessories. So to start off with, Ming has got different hands than these other guys. So he has the gnarly spellcasting hand that I mentioned before, and he's got a gripping hand in the box. He comes with a trigger finger hand himself, left trigger finger hand, for his gun, which is again more of the same. So you've got that same gun again with the same effects. So you've got the long one and you've got the small one, but... He has some very signature accessories that kind of blow the rest of them out of the water. So he's got his uh, signature sword here, which looks just fantastic. Again, this is all very retro-futuristic when it comes to its design. So you've got this kind of uh, garish hilt with the very techno-looking blade with that black and red uh, pommel on it there. Looks fantastic. I really like this. Really well done. And then we've got his serpent staff, which is, I mean, I think this is probably my favorite accessory in the entire wave. Uh, it's got a translucent finned dragon head at the top, which looks fantastic. The sculpt on that is tremendous. The paintwork is really well done. Uh, he, of course, can hold this in his uh, trigger finger hand or the gripping hand, so you can have him holding the sword uh, and the staff at the same time. But this is such an awesome accessory, and very unique, and of course, very, uh, very specific to Ming here. So he has, uh, he doesn't have a buddy, and he doesn't have a laser sword, but he has uh, a really, really awesome, awesome staff. And then they all come with those awesome effect parts that, uh, frankly, are worth the price of admission in many respects, because this is the kind of stuff I love getting when it comes to figures. So yeah, like I said, there's a lot I like with these, and there's a lot I don't like with these. A lot of my problems could be just that, my problems. I truly don't know what you're going to experience when it comes to your figures. I just know that mine have not been the easiest when it comes to cooperating with me out of the box. I gave them baths, I hit them with the hair dryer, and that got most of the things moving. But at the end of the day, I had to take my figures apart to get to a point where I thought they could move correctly. That is not really acceptable. Most folks are not going to go that route. If it was anybody else, they might have broken the legs clean off trying to do that because I was I was sure that I was going to rip these legs apart at some point if I went any further. I do think that they look fantastic. They move well once you get them to quote unquote normal and they come with an awesome array of accessories. But whatever is going on with the QC on these figures is definitely a problem and something that needs to be looked at, addressed, whatever you want to call it, because at the end of the day, it's going to prohibit people from moving them correctly, from playing with them correctly, and potentially buying more. So that's going to do it for this look at the NECA Toys Defenders of the Earth. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share, and until next time.